Fox 66 News with Jennifer Mobilia, meteorologist Tom Atkins, and Jay Pushkar with sports. This is Fox 66 News first at 10. Falling debris, state police urge caution after reports of people throwing bricks and rocks off several overpasses. Good evening, I'm Jennifer Mobilia. We will have that story coming up. But first tonight, a gun reportedly fired inside a home leads to attempted homicide charges for one man. It's new at 10 o'clock. According to Mill Creek, police officers responded to the 2300 block of West 32nd Street just before noon today for a gun being fired inside a home. The victim told police his roommate, Ronald Haggerty Jr., fired a shotgun towards him. The suspect took off before police arrived. However, he later returned to the home and was taken into custody. Multiple charges, including criminal attempt of homicide, were filed against Haggerty. He was arraigned and remanded to the Erie County Prison on $250,000 bond. Switching gears to weather now, meteorologist Craig Flint has your Fox First Forecast. Hey, Craig. Hi, Jen. Good evening to you. And temperatures uh, tonight uh, actually a little cooler uh, than I had anticipated because we have clear sky and actually not much fog. Now, I can't completely rule out some patchy fog here as we go through the overnight. That is a look live into Warren. Uh, so with a mainly clear sky out there, uh, and, and light winds for some, like at the airport, there could be some localized patchy fog. But with a light wind and clear sky, the temperatures have dropped into the 40s. And more of a southerly breeze picks up later tonight, so we're going to see temperatures climb into the mid-50s by morning. And on our way to the low 70s, and then some as we head into the weekend, the complete forecast a little bit later on in the newscast, Jen. All right, Craig, thank you. Well, imagine driving on the highway going about 65 miles per hour and out of nowhere, a rock or brick comes crashing down on your car. It's scary. It can be deadly and state police say it is happening right here in Erie and tonight investigators are trying to track down the suspect or suspects. Matt Mathias joins us now with more on just how serious these crimes are. Matt. Well, Jen, police are looking into finding those responsible for five different incidents since October 31st, and they are sure to face serious consequences. According to state police, suspects are throwing bricks and bags of rock from overpasses at cars traveling on Interstate 79 and 90. There have been five incidents at locations, including the Lake Pleasant Road overpass on Interstate 90, the Mill Fair Road overpass on Interstate 90, and the Old State Road overpass on Interstate 79. It's a misdemeanor of the first degree when striking an occupied vehicle uh, that is on the roadway. As of right now, obviously you have uh, people that were struck with them. Their vehicles are damaged and they're shaken up. Uh, they're not going to be able to probably drive under an underpass without looking above it now, without thinking, is something going to come down on my vehicle? Thankfully, there was no injuries reported at the time. However, if injuries are involved, charges are much more severe than a misdemeanor. We reached out to a local attorney to learn more about the consequences. If someone's injured or killed, the, the perpetrators will be responsible for whatever that crime is, up to and including murder. Purchase adds that financial responsibilities that could come from something like this could follow you throughout your whole life. These perpetrators need to understand is that what they're doing isn't a joke, it isn't a ruse. They're putting people in, in serious risk of harm, significant harm. Uh, it's very unlikely that if they hit someone it will only be property damage. Now, state police want the public to know that they're doing everything they can to stop this so that people can continue to travel safely. Jen? Yeah, and as attorney Eric Purchase just said, I mean, this is very serious, so we hope they figure it out soon. All right, thanks, Matt. Fox 66 News is your local election headquarters. Democratic congressional candidate Dan Pastore hosted a town hall meeting with voters at the Blasco Memorial Library tonight. The town hall focused on the economy and jobs as people spoke about their concerns and asked questions. Pastore says he feels it is crucial to hold in person and open town halls in Erie County, something he says his opponent hasn't done in years. I think that is your job as a representative to be out there, meet with the people, not be afraid to take their questions. So having an open town hall like this, I think, is an essential part of the job. And if I were your representative, I would do this on a regular basis throughout the district. For all your election coverage, turn to your local election headquarters, yourerie.com. 
A Western Pennsylvania man has turned himself into authorities for his involvement in the riot at the U.S. Capitol on January 6th. According to the FBI, Brian Sizer turned himself in shortly after an arrest warrant was issued on October 27th of this year. FBI agents were able to place Sizer at the Capitol after he posted a selfie outside the Capitol on January 6th as the riots began. After checking closed circuit footage, agents spotted Sizer and his wife taking a selfie inside the Capitol building. Cross-referencing that footage with Sizer's license photo and a subsequent interview with his wife, an arrest warrant was issued. Tonight, he faces numerous charges. Erie County Community College is teaming up with EMTA to make getting to class a lot easier. Brian Wilk reports. Sometimes just getting to class can be the toughest assignment of them all. The new transit hub sits at the Erie County Community College's West Campus, formerly Villa Maria Academy on West 8th Street. Jeremy Peterson with EMTA says it's state of the art. What we've been doing, uh, one of our initiatives over the last couple years has been taking out our old shelters and putting in newer, more modern shelters, which are uh, powered by solar, so there's lights at night. Uh, it's, it's safer, and uh, once again, it's more aesthetically pleasing too, especially for a campus like EC3. Guy Goodman with the Erie County Community College says mobility tends to be a barrier. One of the things that we uh, here at EC3 are really committed to is removing as many barriers as possible and transportation is one of them. And gives them the chance to go to all the other campus locations. It gives our students the ability to move not only from this campus here on our west campus but also to our east campus, to our Cory campus at uh, EC3 Cory. Uh, as well as up to our EC3 Summit location, which EMTA does uh, serve all four of those locations. He's excited to see it open up next month. This one, um, with the weather coming in, uh, hopefully that's going to uh, obviously create some shelter. It does have the, uh, the solar panels on top, so um, a little bit upgraded, if you will. We're, we're excited to kind of uh, test that out for him as well. Brian Wilk, Fox 66 News. The decision regarding funds for GCAC is now under review by Erie County Council. Councilwoman Mary Rennie says the original request by GCAC was on the order of three quarters of a million dollars. Rennie says this funding is provided every year by the county and the matching funds for the work that GCAC does for Meals on Wheels, senior centers and more. But she says the budget this year removed that. Rennie says at this time it is up to County Council to review the entire budget and make a decision regarding the inclusion or removal of GCAC funds. These are um, services, facilities, programs that impact people's lives directly. We don't take that lightly. And so when the County Council votes on it, votes on the issue of GCAC, it will be from a position of being responsive to the needs of citizens, but also being responsible, knowing that we're responsible to the taxpayers. And Rennie says County Council will vote on November 23rd. Renovations are underway at Granite Ridge, the former Mercyhurst Northeast campus. Chelsea Swift got an inside look at some of the improvements. A company called Blue Ocean purchased the former Mercyhurst Northeast campus in January, renaming it Granite Ridge. Now renovations are well underway. When you have a, a property that's been a specific use for, for over 100 years, uh, it, there, there's a lot of design changes that need to go into uh, if you want to separate those spaces. Unger says there are plans to use the chapel for wedding ceremonies, adding many couples have expressed interest. He hopes they can be scheduled in 2023. In addition to the chapel, they remodeled former dorms into townhomes that are now fully occupied. He says more apartments will soon be available. We very seldom have vacancies, um, so that's allowed us to look at expanding. So, you know, we, we have an, a property in the back, uh, 12 to 15 acres back there, to where we look at adding probably 40 to 60 additional uh, cottage-type units in the future. In addition to showing interest in residential spaces, the community is also inquiring about other areas of campus to host events. You know, we've had some outside-the-area interest as well as a lot of local interest, and we're 
we're trying to evaluate, you know, how can we combine the two? So we're looking at some opportunities that hopefully we'll do that in the near future. Unger says Granite Ridge could provide business owners with a chance to get their feet wet and partner with other local businesses. See if there's an, an opportunity maybe for them to partner in spaces as well for maybe the small business not ready to take on a full space by themselves, but maybe if they were to partner with somebody else and, and share times, uh, we may be able to offer the spaces to them. Chelsea Swift, Fox 66 News. The Erie Humane Society is going the extra mile to help a special needs dog live his best life. Brianna Malone has more on Lenny and his progress. The Erie Humane Society has partnered with a shelter in South Carolina called Dorchester Paws to help a special needs dog named Lenny receive the best quality of life. We'll be walking in no time, huh? And we, so Won't we? we? The Humane Society in Dorchester Paws suspect Lenny was hit by a car after they say a good Samaritan found Lenny on the side of the road and as a result lost the use of his back legs, bowels, bladder, and tail. Dorchester Paws raised funds to have Lenny flown into Erie after veterinarians could not identify the reason for Lenny's injuries on X. He was at Balanced Physical Therapy yesterday. Um, an anonymous donor provided him his set of wheels and his foster was with him and Dr. Nestor at Balance, they were able to see that he's trying to stand on his back legs. He's starting to wag his tail a little bit. Since coming to Erie, Lenny has been taken in by a foster where he is receiving love along with his rehabilitation treatment. As soon as I came in and seen him, my heart melted. I could not say no. I've given him nothing but love and he's given me so much love back. The executive director recalls the moments she saw Lenny making improvements in physical therapy. It was at the end of the day, I was with my children in my home and I was crying in my kitchen. We're really fortunate at the Erie Humane Society to have a community that supports us and supports these pets to, to go forward and, and live amazing lives. Right now, we are unsure as to what caused Lenny's injuries, but next week he'll receive detailed scans in Pittsburgh. He has an appointment next Thursday in Pittsburgh, and um, hopefully them test will tell us exactly what's going and we can get him more rehab and he'll be running soon. Brianna Malone, Fox 66 News. The annual Veterans Day Parade is coming up and Erie City Hall is showing its support with a local veterans display. Local leaders gathering at City Hall today to talk about upcoming events this weekend, including the veterans display and the veterans parade as opportunities to show your support to those who served and are currently serving our country. Absolutely, we want folks to come out to the parade, but we also want them to engage on Veterans Day and every day thereafter that they can. So if you have a neighbor, family member, or a friend, um, talk to them about their service. Um, give them a hug, thank them, um, and let them know that we support them. The parade will kick off at 9.30 on Saturday morning at 26th and State Streets. 35 groups will participate, including elected officials and the Erie High Marching Band. And we'll be right back. Your health matters. That's why Jet 24 Action News brings you your health every Sunday and Thursday. Watch stories focused on your family's safety and wellness from emerging research to diet and exercise to new medical treatments. Stay up to date on the latest health trends. Your health is sponsored by the Care Communities of Presbyterian Senior Care Network. Aging is a natural part of life. We're making aging easier. Visit us at srcare.org. I care about the people of Erie because I live here. I grew up here, I spent most of my life living here, and a lot of the people are friends and family, and I care about the community. We try very hard to bring you the stories that matter most to you, and work hard to be the news team that you can trust. Watch Fox 66 News with Jennifer Mobilia, first at 10. Efforts to strengthen relationships between the community and law enforcement continue tonight. Coco with a cop taking place at the MLK Center. People getting the chance to hear from police officers as well as ask questions during a panel discussion. Tonight's gathering is similar to the Coffee with a Cop event, which happened last month. Aortic dissection is a tear in the aorta, the largest artery in the body. Now, because the aorta carries blood from the heart to the circulatory system, when it splits open, it usually means sudden death. But for some lucky patients, lucky enough to make it into an operating room, surgeons are utilizing a super cool down of the body. Lou Baxter has more. It's your health tonight. 
Aortic dissection is caused by a weak aorta, the artery that carries blood flow from the heart to the body. When it ruptures, it's often deadly. 50% of the time, people who present with dissection don't make it to the hospital. Of uh, the people who do make it to the hospital, only half of those survive. Meaning time is critical. The way that how we've gotten better results is understanding how to protect the brain during uh, the surgery. It's what we call anti-grade cerebral protection. Doctors do this by using hypothermia induction or cooling the body to preserve the brain during heart-lung bypass. What we call hypothermic circulatory arrest is when we cool the body down, we stop all flow, uh, blood flow to the rest of the body. Sandra Fernandez loves to spend time in her kitchen, but recently surgeons needed to treat an aortic aneurysm. Dr. Lee removed Sandra's aneurysm and replaced her heart valve during the operation. Doctors induced hypothermia to protect her brain function. I have a four and a seven. Whatever we've been able to fix will stay that way for her for the rest of her life. Sandra woke up in recovery to a very happy family. Now she's enjoying life, cooking for her kids using her grandmother's precious recipes. I feel happy because I say, okay, I'm here again, I survived. <laughs> Lou Baxter, Fox 66 News. .com with our digital exclusives. Check out local news stories and weather forecasts specific to your area. Click on the top headlines of what's trending and stay up to date with extended interviews. All access articles with extra details you won't see anywhere else. And links to additional content based on the news that interests you. Stay informed and stay connected with digital exclusives only on YourErie.com. Weather Authority, here's meteorologist Craig Flint. Live look tonight uh, into Warren here, and uh, there's still the chance that we're going to see some patchy light fog. It's not going to be as widespread. Uh, the wind speeds have dropped off, though, here in Erie, uh, and there's still a little bit of lingering, loitering, low-level moisture, so maybe some patchy fog. It's not going to be, like I said, as widespread or dense as we go uh, through the overnight. But with that clear sky and light wind, the temperatures actually dropped to 48. So a little cooler than I anticipated. Now don't forget, this is the weekend where you fall back. Uh, so you turn the clocks back by an hour uh, Saturday night before bed, which means the sunset on Sunday will be 507. And I was just kind of thinking on the fly here. Do you really, is there any like clock that you actually have to physically turn back anymore? I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah? Cell phones? Yeah. Oh, you're, well, yeah. Well, fancy over there. And uh, I know Dave Belmondo will forget to set his clock back. I know he will. He'll be showing up late to work. Anyway, let's uh, talk about temperatures now. So we're in the 40s uh, in uh, Erie. 57, though, right now into Meadville. Hey, out west, if you're wondering where winter is, it's here. As the jet stream has uh, moved south, snowing in the mountains of Washington State, the Rockies. Uh, and you know what? Good. Let it snow out there, man, because they need it. Every flake, every drop of rain they can get. Flip side, here on the east side, uh, we've got some great weather. High pressure building off the eastern seaboard. So that's going to throw some warmer air north uh, as we go into the day tomorrow. So the warmest moments are always ahead of a cold front. And that cold front, you can see it off to the west. Now, it's going to take some time to get here, so I think tomorrow's fine. Good deal of sunshine. As we get into Saturday, what's going to happen is clouds are going to start to increase on Saturday in advance of this low. But the track of this low will be up through the western Great Lakes. So out ahead of it, all that warm air gets thrown north. So I think Saturday we challenge the record high 
of 77 uh, before that front comes through. And you can see there's actually a skinny little line of thunderstorms with this thing. So I wouldn't be surprised if we get a rumble of thunder Saturday night. Cold air west, that's where winter is. And as we look down the road through the 13th of November, odds favor uh, above normal temperatures. Now, they will turn a little lower, uh, but it's still going to be mild for November. So there's the record-challenging 75 on Saturday. Clouds are going to increase. Gusts Saturday, man, 40, 45 miles an hour, maybe even higher. Get low. Don't forget you go back one hour, maybe a sprinkle Sunday morning and then clearing. And like I said, it will turn cooler, quote unquote, into next week. But upper 50s and low 60s, that's still above normal for November. And another stretch of great weather into next week. Back after this. continues on YourErie.com with our digital exclusives. Check out local news stories and weather forecasts specific to your area. Click on the top headlines of what's trending and stay up to date with extended interviews. All access articles with extra details you won't see anywhere else. And links to additional content based on the news that interests you. Stay informed and stay connected with digital exclusives only on YourErie.com. And now, Fox 66 Sports with Jay Pushkar. Good evening. Over 100 years ago, the first flyovers before a major sporting event occurred when it happened prior to Game 1 of the 1918 World Series. Recently, Penn State experienced a flyover before its game versus Ohio State. Nittany Nation's Andrew Clay takes a behind-the-scenes behind look from Happy Valley. College football has long been one of America's great pastimes. It's got big plays electric fans and pageantry. You can't forget about the pageantry. The first flyover came more than a hundred years ago and over time they've become a celebrated pregame ritual. Ahead of Penn State's game against Ohio State on Saturday, a pair of HC 130s carried a trio of Nittany Lions high above Beaver Stadium. Do you always see pictures of it and like you're in the stadium, um, but seeing it flying overhead was really neat. Colonel Jim Tuthill and Lieutenants Jane Lee and Alexandra Maldonado are a part of the 415th Squadron out of Kirkland Air Force Base in New Mexico. I'm Jane Lee, class of 2019. I'm Alexandra Maldonado, class of 2020. We are Penn State. <laughs> <laughs> Lieutenant Lee, a Belfont native, grew up in Happy Valley, but it took coming to Penn State to become a football fan. Freshman year, everyone was like, oh, you have to get like student tickets. So I was like, of course. While Lieutenant Maldonado grew up like many, bleeding blue and white. My mother used to always stuff me in little cheerleader outfits, and I hated it because that's just not my personality. How quickly did you say yes when they asked if you wanted to be this way over? Immediately. Just 100% immediately. <laughs> Thursday, ahead of the game, the crew took a practice run across the skies of State College. Perfect flyover boils down to one thing, perfect timing. We just know that from our six miles inbound is going to take, at our certain airspeed, is going to take a minute and a half, let's say. Um, so we know that once the national anthem starts, we need to be headed from six miles inbound, pointed towards the stadium, so to, to, to time it correctly. On Saturday, the crew began its routine around 9 a.m., hitting the skies around 11. And as the final notes, the national anthem rang, a familiar rumble grew as the planes roared over the field. For this team, it was mission accomplished. Being part of that game event, I've never been, um, you know, a part of anything other than just being a spectator. So that's going to be the best is, is to just have that memory of being part of the game. Honestly, just to be back at a game, I think. Um, the flyover is really cool. I'm very excited. But just to be back where the energy is really neat and like it's almost like being back at home. Reporting for your Nittany Nation, I'm Andrew Clay. And we'll be right back. 
Your health matters. That's why Jet 24 Action News brings you your health every Sunday and Thursday. Watch stories focused on your family's safety and wellness from emerging research to diet and exercise to new medical treatments. Stay up to date on the latest health trends. Your health is sponsored by the Care Communities of Presbyterian Senior Care Network. Aging is a natural part of life. We're making aging easier. Visit us at srcare.org. I care about the people of Erie because I live here. I grew up here, I spent most of my life living here, and a lot of the people are friends and family, and I care about the community. We try very hard to bring you the stories that matter most to you, and work hard to be the news team that you can trust. Watch Fox 66 News with Jennifer Mobilia, first at 10. And finally on Fox, a spectacular sight over Niagara Falls. 600 drones ascended over the falls to create this dazzling light show. As never before scenes from the upcoming Avatar, The Way of Water were projected onto the falls. The two night spectacles celebrated the latest trailer release of the long awaited sequel to James Cameron's Avatar movie. The Way of Water takes fans back to Pandora 12 years after the first film, where the two main characters are in a fight to help save the changing planet. The movie premieres in theaters on December 16th. That looked spectacular. Pretty cool. I oh wish I would have known about that. I know I would have gone up Make there. Make a trip up there. Heck yeah. yeah. Not far? No, not at all. Not would have been all. a nice day for a drive too. Uh, ah, yeah. yeah, right? All right. <laughs> uh, hey, there's your uh, weather tomorrow. Look at that. I mean, are we in November? I know, this is amazing. We let's could challenge the record here Saturday. Let's do it. So yeah, let's, why not? I mean, if it's going to be this warm, we might as well. Clouds are going to increase. The other thing about Saturday is going to be gusty, like 40 mile per hour gusts, yeah. maybe even higher. So it's going to be windy. Uh, there could be a sprinkle or a shower early Sunday. It makes a hasty exit. And even into next week, it's a little cooler. That's but, beautiful. But temperature, I mean, those temperatures are still above average for November. No complaints here. This will change <laughs> in about three weeks. Of course it will. All right, you can catch breaking news anytime right here on YourEerie.com, and you can watch today's top stories on Jet24 Action News at 11. Have a great night, everyone.